Hi church, my name is David and what a joy it is to come to you on this Good Friday. A day that is so important in all of history, but really important to those that follow Christ. I always wonder why this Good Friday is called good. So let's just dive right into the biblical text and get a, an account, a historical account of exactly what happened at the crucifixion of Christ in Mark chapter 15 verses 22 through 37. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, casting lots for them to decide which each would get. Now it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge written against him was King of the Jews. They crucified two criminals with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by were yelling insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! The one who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. When it was noon, darkness came over all of the land until three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sakbaktani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Jesus let out a loud, loud cry and he breathed his last. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was standing opposite of him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. See, through human perspective, this had to be the most excruciating day in all of history. The Son of Man and the Son of God dying a horrific death of crucifixion on a Roman cross. Before Christ's death on the cross, we would find ourselves in an impossible position that we could not correct. We were found guilty of sin, guilty of exchanging God's glory for our own glory or for the glory of idols. We would find ourselves in a position where we deserve the full destruction and wrath of God. Now we come to a place where we realize how good this Good Friday really is. God did not give us what we deserve, but instead in His abundant mercy, in His abundant grace, He provided a substitute in His perfect Son, Jesus Christ. Romans 5-6 says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree so that, having died to sins, we might live for righteousness. By His wounds you have been healed. For every beating, for every lashing, for every piercing, for every wound that was created by the nails that were driven into His hands and the nails that were driven into His feet, for every wound that was created by the thorns that were pressed upon His head, He was bearing our sins. So we come to this day with reverence and with humility and with thanksgiving and with great joy. God has accomplished what we could not. He remained just and He took care of sin by nailing it to the cross. Our sin debt was paid on that Good Friday when Jesus was crushed in our place. John Piper in his book, The 50 Reasons Why Jesus Came to Die, he closes with this prayer. Oh, I pray that the fog of indifference to eternal things would be lifted and that the reality of heaven and hell would become clear. I pray that the centrality of Jesus in all of history would become plain and that His death would be seen as the most important event in all of history. Oh Lord, what an amazing truth You have revealed. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He did not mainly do this by His teaching, but by His dying. 
Would you then, O merciful Father, grant that all who hear this will see their need and see your perfect provision in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray this because of the promise of your Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Happy Good Friday. This new life by the blood of Jesus Christ.